Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Parks and Rec uh, Advisory Board meeting of the March 2nd, 2023. Uh, the meeting is now called to order. We will do a roll call if we can start over on the right hand side. Veronica Johnson. <clears throat> Glenn Larner. Joe Longobardi. John Lydon. Don D. Graves. And I'm Greg Weaver. Um, now that we got a Agenda, we got the agenda. We're gonna go ahead and approve the minutes from last meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. A second? Second. Any discussion? Any additions? Anything? Okay, let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. Uh, the one other thing we have before we get into the, we have some, Park use and permit applications for St. Clements Island. Uh, one of them is for April 1st, uh, 2023. And it's the Friends of St. Clements Island and Piney Point Museum. And we got one for July 8th, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Friends of the St. Clements Island, Piney Point Museum. Um, there is the, uh, the, the requesting alcohol consumption, that's it, not sell, not sales. Do I have a motion to approve? I move to approve the St. Mar St. Clements Island Museum Park Use Permit applications for April 1st, 2023 and July 8th, 2023. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Second, any discussion? Okay, ready for a vote, all approved? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, those are approved. Uh, real quick, we're gonna look at the agenda. We do have a hard stop at six o'clock for employee awards. So I just wanna let everyone know that, that we will be stopping at uh, six o'clock to do that. Before the before we get into that, um, I had a request to uh, amend the agenda. Is there somebody? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I move that we amend the agenda to include the baseball and softball programs to share their capital improvement budget request with the board. Do I have a second on that? I'll second it. Okay, is there any discussion? Is there a time limit since we're under the gun tonight? We can apply a time limit. If anybody would wanna come up with a time limit, we can ask for a time limit and also the number of participa participants. Uh, it, is my, it is my understanding, fellow members, that the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, Programs have elected Mr. R.J. Bean to represent them, and he's asking for 10 minutes uh, to speak to the board in regards to the uh, <clears throat> capital improvement uh, recommendations that they would like us to hear that he's going to submit to the director uh, with us with them this evening. Uh, I believe they're all in attendance. I'm not positive, but I'm gonna read them off. Th those that have uh, come up with the proposals, Alexa Gray, Jim Sewell, John Cockerham, Tyler Kemi, Bob Richardson, and of course, Mr. R.J. Bean. Uh, the request is for 10 minutes and question and answer afterwards, fellow members. And is that for one person only? From the only from the one group. person, that's only correct. One person from the group and we can work. we can work them into the appropriate part of the agenda. It doesn't have to start at this particular time. There's other areas that are going to be discussed in the agenda, and that's when they're asking to uh, to be a part of the meeting. Okay, I think what we might want to do just uh, to put it into our agenda, we might want to put it after the hourly employees, just so we get to that, and we have a hard stop, and then the time limit. You want ten minutes. They're requesting 10 minutes. I would I would suggest we start with that because we have a hard, fast time at six to do the okay. employees. So. Do it, does that give everybody enough time to ask their questions? That's the only, that's the only reason I wanted to put it after. But. Gives us 20 minutes to get it done. Yeah. Okay, everyone feels we can do it, we can do it. He's taking right 10 off. and then we got 10 minutes to figure it out. 
Is that good with the director? Move that down? Sure. Okay. No problem, we'll do that. We'll put it right uh, on the first part of the uh, new business. Do I have, uh, do we want to do a vote? Any more discussion first? No, a vote? No. Okay, do we have an amendment to the, to the motion? We have to have an amendment with the time. Um, okay, do you have, do you want to have the motion? No, she's been seconded. Are you going to call for a vote? Yeah, with the amendment, uh, we allow ten for the minutes. 10 minutes. Ten minutes. Right. Yes. yes, the time limit would be 10 minutes. That's the question I have. So right. we'll do that, and now we can do a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, we'll go ahead and do that. We'll start that right. If Mr. Bean wants to Mr. Bean. join us. Christina, you can do the time. I'll watch the time. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Uh, thanks to the Record Park Advisory Board for allowing me to speak in front of all of these people and for all of these people tonight. Uh, we truly appreciate you guys giving us the, the uh, chance for our voices to be heard. So as Don mentioned, we have league leaders here from across St. Mary's County in attendance. We got St. Mary's Little League, Babe Ruth, Legion Baseball, Youth T-Ball organizations, and many travel organizations out there. I've seen Senators, I've seen Warriors, I've seen Wow Factor, I uh, see Hustle, Ospreys, all the uh, travel organizations down here represented tonight. And we're here tonight to provide you guys with some capital improvement project budget ideas and offer some near-term solutions where we could see immediate benefits for youth baseball and softball, and then some future improvements that will help with the growth and sustainment of our two sports. So I'm going to dive right into it. For some near-term solutions, we would like to request the advisory board and Mr. Shepard to look at incorporating the following into the capital improvement project budget for FY24. First part is additional batting cages at the following locations. Chancellor's Field 4, Cecil Park Field 4, an additional batting cage at Baggett Park to make three, an additional batting cage at 5th District to make three, and two batting cages at 7th District Park between fields two and three next to the basketball court. We're also looking at adding some bullpens across some of the county parks. The reason is a bullpen provides a safe environment for our pitchers and catchers to warm up before and during a game. We like to look at designated areas for bullpens with player and specta spectator safety in mind, where pitchers are throwing away from the infield and into the outfield with a protective fence to stop any pass balls. We like to explore bullpens at the following locations. Chancellor's Run Field 4, Cecil Park Field 2 and 4, Dorsey Park Field 1 and 2, Lancaster Park Field 4, Baggett Park Field 2 and 3, 5th District and 7th District. We're also looking for netting for foul balls that will protect the safety of our spectators at Baggett Park between field three and four. And we're also looking for netting for foul balls at Cecil Park field four that will prevent lost baseballs on the right field side. Field four at Cecil is sitting next to the woods which, with a large drop off that makes it unsafe for kids to retrieve foul balls. So a net would address their safety and help leagues save dozens of lost baseballs each season. We'd also like to explore the following long-term solutions within the next three to five years. Two 90-foot turf fields, one at Dorsey Field 1, one at Baggett Field 2. Two 60-70-foot turf fields, one at Dorsey Field 2, one at Baggett Field 3. Grass infield conversions, Chancellor's Field 2, Cecil Field 2, Letty Dent 90-foot. And then new high-quality infield mixes at the following locations. Chancellor's Run Field 2, 3, and 4, Cecil Park Field 2, Lancaster Park Field 4, Letty Dent 90-foot. We, as a community of volunteers with over 100 years of experience dedicated to the youth in our county, stand ready to work together in order to get our baseballs and softball players what they need. In the very near future, we'd be happy to sit down with Mr. Shepard, where we can have an open discussion about our capital improvement, broad, uh, capital improvement project budget request. This would help us better understand the costs involved and the practicality of our request, so we can work together to see these near and long-term solutions through. Thank you to the Rec and Park Advisory Board for giving us the opportunity to be heard this evening, and I'm standing by for any questions. I'll go ahead and start with questions, Ron. Uh, none here, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Bill? I don't have any questions. So, can we get a copy of that? Yes, I have an infographic I can leave. You have one you can you. pass out to the members now. I Mr. sure do, yes, sir. Thank you. Don, do you have any Don, do you have any questions? Thank you. I might find one or two. Thanks. Okay. The uh, February 6th meeting I was able to attend for baseball and softball meetings that the uh, department put on with Mr. Shepard and staff. And uh, some of the discussions that were taking place uh, at that particular time was uh, <clears throat> continued conversations regarding uh, the increase of fees and lights. Uh, I'm going to ask if Mr. Shepard would take a minute to join us and explain. Is he here? Yeah, he's here. The SMECO updates are on the agenda, on the last agenda item. Okay. So that's already an agenda item for us. All righty, thank you. Uh, so I guess what you're saying, Ms. Bishop, then then th that conversation is co going to come up under that. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sure that I'm sure that the uh, people present are going to want to hear that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hopeful. I, I think it's going to give a better understanding for the fees that uh, are going to be presented, and that's why I'm glad to hear that they're going to be addressed. Uh, other, other than that, I think it would sound like all the other questions I was going to bring up are going to come up uh, under that under that title. So I'm going to wait for them in order to move through uh, any other part of the agenda that that we need to take into. And I, I hope those uh, that are here will remain to go through that because I think it's going to help bring uh, good conversation for them to hear uh, during that during that time. That's all that I have uh, to the chair. Good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. He was catching me up on the agenda. I apologize. So we are at the new, first new business, which is the gymnastics center. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bean. Thank you. Okay. All right. Moving right along. I, I, I assume that we've we've. Um, Concluded our, our agenda, excuse me, our business with Mr. Bean. Yeah. To my knowledge, yes. Apologies for, for missing it. All right, moving right along to the gymnastics center. There's a question. Though. Hold on a second. Oh, we're, we're, did we vote on sp public comments? No. Q and A? Not yet. We didn't ask for that. Oh. All we had for the 10 minutes. Was that motion, um, uh, was that motion Approved. granted by the board members that we'll have public comment? No. Mr. Bean was, it was only supposed to be Mr. Bean. Yeah, we talked to Mr. Bean for 10 minutes, for 10. Okay. 10 minutes to all right. present this. Okay, so so if we are, as, as we are all aware, according to um, direction from the county attorney, we do not have to allow public comment unless the, unless the board wishes. So if there's a motion to allow public comment, I'll receive that now. Well, I'd make a motion to allow public comment with the understanding that at six o'clock it's got to stop. Understood. At six o'clock, we have the uh, ceremony for the employees, so we need to make sure we get taken on time. Understood. Is there a second? I'd second that motion. I would uh, like to make a three minute. Three minutes? Three minutes, yeah. Okay. All so right. Don't so. linger on all night. So the motion before the board is to allow public comment right. on Mr. Bean's um, presentation and limit the commenters to three minutes. Is that understood? Yes. Yep. And is there a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Who made the motion? I'm sorry. Thank you. All right, so the board um, has, that motion is authorized. So um, I would just ask that if, oh, we don't have a mic. Oh, there it is. Um, if you come up to the podium and you are wishing to give your comments, you have a three minute, excuse me, a three minute total time. So um, this is not a Q and A, we'll receive your comments. And if there are any actions, thank you so much. If there are any, there. Right there. If there are any actions yes, or, or information sir, she's bringing the mic that's, that's that is that. needed from the board, um, we'll take that into consideration. And then, of course, someone from the department will respond via an email. So just let me know when you're ready. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to need you to tell me your name yeah. so I know who's. Because we didn't have a sign-in sheet. Alex. Flood. C K. Okay. Thank you. Mic is open. All right. I would like to take this opportunity to say a few words and. Uh, of the travel baseball organizations of the county. Um, so what I'd like to ask about this evening is um, the field allocations for travel baseball teams. Uh, so I'm, I coach for the Senators organization and you know I use Senators travel baseball as a way to, well let me just, let me just go off my notes here. Travel baseball is a way to join a team of kids with similar abilities, focus, and work ethic. In my opinion, it is the best way to develop the skills the kids need to be competitive for middle school and high school ball. I quickly found that once I started coaching travel ball, that it's hard to secure a field for practices in this county. It is by far the most stressful part of being a, a travel ball coach. The way it's been explained to me is that Little League and Babe Ruth get first claim on all the fields because they've been using the fields uh, for a threshold of five years. Travel organizations are not assigned a field until the larger organizations have taken all the fields needed and we are often placed in undesirable fields in much need of repair that are not conveniently located. There are dozens of Little League and Babe Ruth teams and perhaps, I don't know, five travel organizations in the area. I'm not advocating that you give us first priority, but you know, I, I would like an equal or an even allocation. I'm just looking to be treated as equal or even slightly below those organizations. Surely we can find a way to fairly provide facilities for both rec leagues and travel leagues. The boys that play on my team love the game of baseball just as much or maybe more than the kids that play in the rec leagues. Travel players will be the ones who make up a large portion of middle school and high school teams that will be representing the county in athletic competition in the coming years. Please help us to better prepare these boys by providing fields that we can use. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Yeah. If you could state your name, first and last name, and, and email address. I've been a county resident since uh, third grade when I came down from D.C. as a kid. That's where, you know, my family is up in that area. But uh, my family's been in business in the local areas for 25 plus years. Um, we've paid uh, a lot of taxes to uh, a lot. Um, annually, we pay uh, more taxes uh, than the median salary <clears throat> in the county. So you can get an idea, we pay a lot of money. And um, when I need somewhere for my kids to go, I leave the county, okay? So Parks and Recs is not doing its job to keep us in the county. Um, my nine to five job outside of running small businesses uh, is for the uh, local government or not for local government, the federal government. Um, I'm gonna award around $300 million this year in contracts to local companies and companies outside the area. Uh, there's two areas that are really hard to retain uh, talent. It's Pax River and Key West. Um, we can't get people in Key West and we can't keep uh, people in Pax River because there's nothing for kids to do. Uh, People coming out of college, they don't want to come to St. Mary's County, and they don't want to go to Key West. Key West is not a place you would raise your kid. Uh, I like going there for vacation. I have the means to go wherever I want. I make a lot of money. I can do that. So I leave your county because your parks and recs does not support my desires, and it, it doesn't help my kids. Um, so when an organization uh, or multiple organizations are asking for help, it's not because they want better dirt, it's because they see the kids leaving the county. Come Friday, we're gone. We're going places 
out of St. Mary's County. So I just want you to know that you're not helping the kids um, uh, stay in the county. And we all know what happens with uh, idle adolescent hands that don't have things to do that do stay in the county. It, it's not good. Uh, there's kids here, so we won't talk about the things they could get in trouble with, but that's what we're looking at when Parks and Recs doesn't supply enough activities or enough resources to the community. So um, I'll, I'll end with that, okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else that like to speak? All right, thank you. I mean, we have five more minutes of, of public comment. Does anyone else like to speak? Now's the opportunity. All right. All right, board members, any discussion? The only thing I would say is, uh, just because we have a large audience here tonight, is we, we are an advisory board. We're not a decision-making board in terms of funding and those things. So our goal is to be the mouthpiece of the public, to share that information, um, but we're not necessarily the, we're not the ones that are ultimately making the decisions on where money is spent. So I just want to- Thank you for- Just for the purpose of making sure everyone's aware of that. We have another speaker, so. I, I think for the best interest, um, if you could please give your parent's name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can give his name. You can give his name. You can give his name. It's okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just didn't want a public disclosure. That's all. He's a minor. That's all. Hi. Good evening. My name is Ryan Biddle, and I play for the 12 U Senators. My family moved here in July 2020, the height of the COVID pandemic. Had it not been for Coach Mike Lewis and Coach Barry Smith, our summer would have not... Um, would have been drastically different. Both coaches were communicating a lot with my dad prior to our arrival and got us on a Babe Ruth team. From there, my brother and I both tried out and made local travel teams as well, and that has been a real blessing. In my short 12 years, I've lived in six different houses in four different states. But more importantly, I've played ball in Delaware, Pennsylvania, Virginia, both Carolinas, Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi, Missouri, Arkansas, and all over Maryland. The condition of the fields in St. Mary's don't even come close to some of the worst fields I have played in um, in those other states. Living here now, I understand soccer and lacrosse are the big sports, but baseball is our national pastime, a, a game of great patience, teamwork, and constant pressure. There isn't a lot to do down here as it is, and by not providing quality fields, we are discouraging kids from going outside, ex exercising, and learning what it means to compete at whatever level that might be. Plus, it is a proven fact that kids that play sports do better in school and are less likely to get in trouble. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think with that we need to. Yeah, we're rolling up on six. Right, right. I, I just want to. One last comment, if I may, uh, to the chair. Uh, uh, I would, I would tell those present that there's, there's going to be a continued discussion in relationship to uh, some of the things that you brought up this evening. So, uh, for lack of a better way of putting, it, if you want to stay tuned after uh, our county employees are recognized, uh, I think you'll, you'll see some uh, proposals and movement from the board. Thank you, Chair. All right. All right, well, ah. hmm. sorry. Thank you for your public comments. Um, now I'd like to turn to the, uh, well, let me just say that we appreciate your comments. As you know, this is a advisory board. As um, one of our members said, we don't have the authority. We're not an authority, authoritative board. We only advise. So I just want you all to keep that in mind um, when we're engaging in these discussions. We advocate for you. We present our, um, our advisement through the director to the county commissioners. So just wanted to reemphasize that. All right, moving right along. So we're gonna take a short recess so we can get set up and invite our employees in. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. If you wish to stay to honor the staff employees, please do so. Um, if not, then now would be the time to, to go ahead and leave the room.
Good evening. Okay. Good evening, board members. Each year, the Recreation and Parks Department relies almost entirely on the dedication and hard work provided by hundreds of hourly employees offering quality recreation programs to the citizens of St. Mary's County. Their talent and passion fuels creative and life-enhancing activities for all ages, young and old. Tonight, we are recognizing 30 individuals who have given their talent to enhance St. Mary's County Recreation and Parks. Many of these individuals share their talent over multiple areas of recreation, including sports, youth development, therapeutic, aquatics, facility maintenance, school age care, and summer camps. The work rarely pauses, so tonight many of these people are not present. They're unable to attend because they're working in the field as we speak, but we're grateful many could join us tonight. Those that were able to make it will be called up by the program in which they work to accept their certificate and their respective supervisors, Arthur Shepard, our Director of Recreation and Parks, and the Recreation and Parks board members, followed by a group photo for each category and then one last photo for the entire group. Representing the school age care and summer camp programs with us tonight is Sherry Nelson, program coordinator. staff unfortunately are, are unable to attend so I'm going to give you a br brief synopsis of the award that they're receiving. Eleanor Hughes recreation specialist for is being awarded tonight for quickly becoming an integral part of the team. She's adapted to our ever-changing schedules and workload and has joyfully taken on additional responsibilities such as mentoring staff and planning special events. She brought a new level of excitement to our birthday party packages and it's resulted in positive feedback. Her dedication to excellence and her flexibility are outstanding representation of St. Mary's County Recreation and Parks. Kirsten Lawrence and Tanya Nikki Bisco are site SAC directors. We reward them tonight for remaining with the school age care program through the pandemic and beyond. Their dedication to provide the best care to children in programs has continued for 40 years. While many staff have come and gone, we can always count on Kirsten and Nikki to carry out our tradition of excellent school age care programs provided by the department. And finally, who couldn't join us tonight, Alexandra Turner, who is also the site director for school age care, has made tremendous contributions to the programs, both summer camp and SAC, working as an inclusion aid in summer camps and ensuring that children with special needs were able to enjoy. She completed the training in just a few months and met the requirements to be promoted to site director this year. She currently leads one of our largest school age care sites and her leadership and performance has ensured the success, successful operations at Evergreen Elementary School. In attendance tonight, Teresa Lachek. <coughs> Teresa is receiving recognition this evening. for her endurance during the pandemic and offering our virtual school access all day care. When nobody else was able to open, we were able to open and we wanna thank her for that and congratulate her on her recent promotion to recreation specialist. Her dependability and experience are great assets to this department and we're excited for the things to come. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get a picture and applause. Congratulations. Representing our therapeutic recreation programs, the Great Mills Pool, and the Wellness and Aquatic Center, with us tonight is Crystal Hayslip, the program coordinator. Crystal has been rising to the occasion and providing outstanding support for both aquatic facilities during Marva Kumpf, the program coordinator's maternity leave absence. Thank you to Crystal for her efforts to support our ongoing services. The following staff are being recognized for the dedication, however, are not able to be with us tonight. Jason Kramer, who serves as our TR Camp Director for Camp Inspire, is being recognized for bringing Camp Inspire back to life this past summer after two very long summers of not being able to hold TR Camp. Thank you for your passion and dedication to create fun and unique opportunities for children who need extra attention and support. 
Taylor Hammett, an adaptive aquatics instructor, for providing excellent support aiding in the return of adaptive aquatics. Her enthusiasm and care for the participants is dynamite, and her ability to assist participants in becoming more comfortable with the water is a joy to watch. Evan Abel. Evan is a program supervisor providing exceptional service to members at the Wellness and Aquatic Center, better known as the WAC, and for always going above and beyond. He provides essential support to the department and offers a friendly and welcoming face to everyone walking through the doors. Always up early, he brings professionalism and enthusiasm that is to be emulated. Jake Lair is also a program supervisor at the Wellness and Aquatic Center and has provided exceptional customer service to members and always goes above and beyond. His dedication for excellence and his flexibility are outstanding representations of the department. Andrew Ponser is a lifeguard who's always willing to fill in when needed at the Great Mill Swimming Pool. He sets the example for team spirit and even comes in on his day off to stop in to make sure everything is covered. We thank him for his team spirit. Michelle Koger is a program supervisor who stepped in and provided exceptional support at the Great Mill Swimming Pool during staff vacancies, and she went above and beyond. She stepped in to help in whenever necessary and demonstrated a great deal of flexibility. In attendance tonight, we have Ms. Sarah Mary and Anna Routson. These are two of our exceptional adaptive aquatics instructors, and we reward them for their enthusiasm, expertise, and drive to make adaptive aquatics a fun place for participants. Their desire to help participants reach their goal is admirable, and we appreciate their ability to connect with the population. Thank you for all you have done for these programs. And Ms. Ernestine Pence. There you go. Ms. Pence has served as a therapeutic recreation camp director for over 40 years. But this past summer when New Horizons couldn't happen, she jumped in and assisted with Camp Inspire. After 40 years of service with the department and providing outstanding participant experiences in summer camp, she rose to the occasion and contributed to the fabulous success. Thank you for your tenured, tenured dedication and enthusiasm you bring to our team. To the awardees in the middle. Oh, yeah. group tonight is representing youth and adult sports programs and with us is Derek Sesker the program coordinator the following staff are not able to attend tonight are Miss Sharon Dotson who serves as our custodian and skate supervisor at Leonard Hall Recreation Center she's being thanked for her unending enthusiasm and humor that she brings every day she demonstrates gratitude for her work at Leonard Hall Recreation Center helping to maintain cleanliness and oversight of the family skate program each Sunday afternoon thank you for bringing joy to your work Teresa Leonard and Wayne Mozo are soccer supervisors and referees, and they are part of the All-Star Soccer Trio that has provided quality support for all things soccer and community wellness. The time and passion spent towards the sport is a great asset to the programs offered, and the third staff of this trio will be recognized in a few moments. Tashara Butler is one of our Rookies of the Year Award for Youth Basketball. Being her first season, um, she was able to offer support every single weekend and she became, quickly became a member of our basketball program. Not here tonight, um, actually I'm gonna jump, apologize, we had a last minute addition. Next up, Mark Somerville um, and no, Karen Rodriguez. 
that, there's, that's where I'll go. <laughs> Karen Rodriguez is a gym supervisor, and she's being recognized for working long hours and never complaining. She cannot get enough hours. You demonstrate teamwork and dedication, earning you the Iron Woman Award. Your dedication to excellence and your flexibility are outstanding representations of the department. And finally, not here tonight, Brooklyn Vance is a gym supervisor. She's being recognized for being a jack of all trades and working across multiple programs with smiles and enthusiasm. And for tonight, not here, but his other half is, Joseph Pat Gatton is not able to join us, but Joseph Zip Douglas, our gym supervisors, they're being recognized as a dynamic duo award for providing exceptional support to the youth basketball program in the northern part of the county. <laughs> Birdie told me that his birthday's tomorrow. So happy yeah. birthday. Another duo that we're recognizing this evening is Mark Somerville and Joseph Lee Herbert, gym supervisors being recognized with a consistency award for providing ongoing work, work each basketball season, providing stability throughout the county. You embrace basketball and we, wear many hats to ensure the program is successful. Thank you for all you do. Also in attendance tonight is Miss Kelly Lowther, the third amigo from the All-Star Soccer Trio Award, providing quality support for all things soccer and community wellness. Your Rookie of the Year awards that we are presenting. Two of the three are here. Not here is Shakira Grayson, but present is Austin Fox and Renee Vignan Vignault. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Program supervisors receiving Rookie of the Year awards for surviving and thriving during your first youth basketball season. Your support and efforts did not go unnoticed and we're pleased to have you as part of the team. Thank you for providing a safe space for our participants and citizens during youth basketball. <laughs> the last duo that I did not mention that are not present that we thought might be is Crystal Mills and Julia Maddox who are score, our scorekeeper duo. They received the second Dynamic Duo Award for providing outstanding support for youth basketball, keeping score, keeping order, and keeping focused, all while working together on a well-oiled machine. Thank you for your commitment every Saturday. Almost there. Thank you to the Recreation and Parks Advisory Board members for allowing us this opportunity to recognize staff tonight. <clears throat> These 30 staff represent nearly 350 hourly employees working for Recreation and Parks who provide daily services and programs to citizens of St. Mary's County. I would be remiss if I did not recognize our three program coordinators who have spent much of their time over the past few months filling in during vacancies while leading our department with professionalism and passion for what we do. In closing, a special thank you to all of our Recreation and Parks staff for their dedication and enthusiastic service, striving to provide exceptional experiences for each citizen in St. Mary's County. You are the key to our success and you make all the difference to carry out the vision to serve as a leader in cultivating exceptional leisure experiences in our community. So thank you, and now I'd like to welcome everybody for one last group picture.
This is my thing. You can go get a cup of coffee with $10. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Where are we at? We're at. We'll, um, we'll pick up with the gymnastics center. Okay. Exactly. We definitely need to have that conversation. Yes. Order. Order. I'm trying to get there. Mr. Sewell. Thank you for that. All right, most of the, uh, again, um, I'd like to give you the opportunity if you'd like to leave the room, now would be the time before we continue with our agenda. Oh, all right, moving right along. I'd like to pick up on our new business uh, board members for the discussion for the Gymnastics Center, Mr. Director. Um, as we know, um, if you've been watching, we've been watching the budget work sessions and there's been a lot of, com lot of conversation regarding the Gymnastics Center. So if you could provide the board with um, the where we are today, and I believe there were some discussions, I'm not sure if there was discussions this week on the Gymnastics Center, but if you could give us an overview of what's going on. Thank you. Um, actually, at the budget work session this past Tuesday, there was no commissioner discussion regarding that. We've been given ahead the uh, capital improvement project budget to go forth with on March 13th, to Monday, March 13th to the planning commission. So you know now there's, the options are, there's few facilities potentially for lease, Mm -hmm. And then there's a possibility, still a possibility, of a new center being built and hopefully on county property. And then what happens most of the time when you build a new facility, it's not an initial capital outlay as such. It's exempt financing, but once again, the user, through their fees, which are currently paying them lease fee at the gymnastics center, then would pay the exempt financing for a new fee. A building of that size probably would, if a new one would come in at about, let's say 4.5 million right now is the estimate for that. Uh, but again, those fees would be paid by the user group. Right. Uh, what, right now, uh, the uh, CSBI, local con um, construction manager and inspector, we've hired him. He's looking at the, the current facility, the two p potential lease facilities, as well as giving us a price cost analysis for a new. So he's going those, making sure that everything's in place to retrofit, and that we'll be probably bringing a report back to the commissioners and myself in two to three weeks, that's and right. that's when you'll have the additional information. I've been meeting, continually meeting, met last night with the uh, stakeholder, parent stakeholder group of the gymnastics center last night keeping them apprised of the situation. All right. Um, so one last question for me. I don't know sure. if any other board members have. So the two lease facilities, are they um, in the general area of where the current gymnastics center is now or will there be a different, um, you know, will it be relocation cost, I should say, that also will be included in, in the... In yeah, the so when, when you move out, we're going to have to move all that equipment out no matter where we go. Uh, and then there's going to be some retrofitting from restrooms to uh, even a, a short-term lease would be the uh, foam pit would need to be done there. Um, restrooms, foam pit, um, and then public safety, those would be the big ones if any, any retrofits done. But uh, the one in Great Mills and one in Lexington Park and in the county properties we have right there at Great Mills High School is one in the area. Uh, and then certainly you're looking for this, also in this you're thinking of the centr centrality of the, of the gymnastics center. But okay. currently right now it's Lexington Park and Great Mills. And that'll be all out in three weeks. Okay, that that's, that's what I was going to mm -hmm. follow up with that. So yes. after three weeks, is it is it your... Um, is it your thought that the commissioners will provide the department with direction on a location and then to move forward? Is that is that the plan? Yeah, but I can't certainly can't speak for them. Of course, but yeah, of we're, course. yeah, I'm sure because here we are, we're in the we're in the budget work session cycle, so that that would be one. Now, if we you know if we're just going for a short term lease, the full story might be not be out yet. Some be a time for decision, but it would just be that hey, we're going to go on a short term lease with the potential to buy or buy or lease. Okay. 
Okay. But, it, but it won't be long now. We have somebody hired and work, working with us to help us move forward so we can give you some better information as soon as possible. Good, good, good. All right. Um, open up for any, any additional if questions. If it's a new members? building, uh, uh, Director, uh, and even a new lease, are the commissioners looking to try to move it more centralized in the county? Yeah, that's what I just talking about. It depends. Um, uh, depends. Because what... <laughs> One of the challenges is, is every, we all want new and we all want nice, mm -hmm. but then again, the user, the, the parents, that's who pays you know, for the building. So you're gonna look at best rates and all that. But central, that's one of my, was my, my hopes for a long time. You know, we opened that facility in 1992, was to have full access. But there there you were, that was a place, well, I'm thinking 92, what was available. So that was available. And then the other, your square footage cost. Uh, you're talking about something ten dollars a square foot, fifteen thousand square foot. That the feet, that's one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year that needs to be paid for. And then you, over a ten-year lease, you're talking about one point five million in lease. Normally, you're going to get at least a, a twenty to get a long term. So now you're up to three million already, and you haven't bought it. So central's good, uh, but still, it's about uh, value and cost affordability too. Any other additional uh, I questions? Got, I got one. Um, Right now, the cost for what the gymnastics uh, people pay for, and that's going for the building, for the rental of the building, right? Does that go for that, or is, does Parks and Recs take part of that? No, 100%, that, that's about a, um, well, we budgeted this past year right at $600,000, but you have to do that for capacity, but it's not that kind of enterprise yet, back up to that, uh, post-COVID, but all the fees from the instructors to the utilities, insurance, taxes, and the lease costs are paid by the user. Paid by the user? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it's not, it's a non, it's a profit program. Mm -hmm. Part of the enterprise fund and it, and it does uh, provide a net for that facility. Can you okay. talk in the mic? Sorry, I was sitting back. All right, all right. Are there any other additional questions, board members? Any more discussion? Just curious, how many how many folks are participating in the gymnastics program? Is Jessica in here? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't mean to cause a problem. You want, me to, you want me to say to see if I'm right or not? Here. Put her on the we, and remember, we have a team and a com uh, competitive team in recreation. So, Jess, what's our latest numbers? Um, currently, with the team, um, we have less than 40. Um, actively participating. We've had several injuries. You know, that happens within gymnastics, especially during competition season. On the recreation side, um, we have anywhere between about 350 to a little bit over 400, depending on the session. Now, at peak times, we were getting up past 500 oh, to wow. 600. Um, since COVID and with our staffing levels, what we're able to accommodate has been hovering somewhere in the mid 300s to just 400. Okay, and and again, the the usage pays for the facility, one hundred percent. Okay, wow. All right. My own personal experience is you're not just getting athletes from St. Mary's County, because you're getting. We have a few um, gymnasts okay. um, that compete competitively on the team. Right. That are in Calvert. Yes. Right. Wow. Okay. My granddaughter was one of them. <laughs> That's why I was asking the question. And, and of course, in rec as well, of, of course, too. We, we, have, we would have that data of, um, out of county or in county. So is there, is there a difference in fee if they're not, a, not an in-county user? Yes. So okay. the commissioners adopted that, I believe, a year or two ago. There are out-of-county fees out -county for fees. most of our programs. Some programs don't, but gymnastics would fall into that okay. out-of-county. Okay. All right, any other, any other questions, board members? I'm good, I'm good, no? thank you. All right, well, thank, thank you. you. Um, we've, we've had, well, myself personally, we've had a lot of questions regarding that. Uh, obviously, residents watch the, the budget work session, so I just wanted to bring that to the, good. To the agenda so we can provide some facts. So, so thank nice. you, appreciate it. Like it. All right, moving right along, moving right along. Actually, we, that's a good segue into our budget work sessions. Um, as you just pretty much stated, um, there are no, I believe there's no more discussion for recreation and parks in the budget work sessions. Are we finished? No, there is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll be to the end. <laughs> if you could just provide uh, the but, board members. But look here, if you look at the uh, uh, centerpiece of this paper, next budget work session, 
questions. Now, so this coming Tuesday, March 7th, they're gonna review the elected officials requests, okay. state's attorney's office, uh, courthouse, uh, on and on. Then um, we go to the planning commission again, we'll be right in this room on Monday, March the 13th with the, with the large requests. Then on March 14th is when we'll have a review with the county departments. I'll be here talking about our uh, parks budget will be a, a prominent one for us. Then you also have your enterprise fund, your recreation enterprise fund, as well as your golf enterprise fund. And that's when we also speak about fees. Then as you keep moving forward, then you get to the end of March, they'll approve a recommended a budget for the county and the uh, Board of Education. Um, um, then in April will be the uh, public hearings, and then May they approve the final budget. So there's still plenty of time for public input. Got it, got it, got it. All right. Any questions so far? No? When, when you uh, talk about fees, uh, Director, what fees are you referring to? All fees related to uh, the Enterprise Fund and Recreation. So those fees would be... Uh, the Gymnastics Center, the Great Mills Pool, Wellness Aquatic Center, Sports uh, Summer Camp, School Age Care, um, Leonard Hall Recreation Center, Carver, uh, the, and then you go to the golf course has another set of fees. So all of that is that that will be discussed at that time. So is the golf course fees, do they fall into the recreational enterprise fund or are they part of the enterprise fund? We, what have, are the two, we have two separate enterprise funds. Okay. And one is the recreation activity fund and the other is the Wicomico Shores Golf Course Enterprise Fund. Activity. So the, the uh, player fees that all of the uh, programs um, are, are required to pay the seven dollars to just take your time. That's part of those fees that we're talking about, correct? The, the uh, park support fee is in that fee chart that will be go before the commissioners in the um, in two weeks. The the obvious is, and, and and I think it would be prudent for us to have have a little bit of discussion along these lines anyhow, uh, because it it came up. Uh, in your February 6th meeting with all the league leaders. Uh, That's right. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, I would hope that by, by having this conversation, it might help clear the air for some clarification in relationship to what's in the public domain. It's a better understanding of okay. why perhaps, uh, why you're tasked with this particular responsibility. Okay. Was that a question to me? Please. Oh, okay. Um, it was um, in 2018, but right at this time, in February of 2018, I returned uh, with Recreation Parks in um, April of 2017. And when they come back to the, um, after, you know, beginning, I was here for a long time and they came back. and. Realize that our parks, and especially the major ones where there's a lot of traffic, multi-sports at the same time, and foot traffic, and and such that we had no one in the parks oversight, and as far as parking, uh, and and um, just public safety. So I then uh, spoke to, um, I mean, right here with the board. We had, well, as a matter of fact, uh, that was people could, were allowed to speak that night, what were their thoughts on uh, fee? Everybody agreed that, that we needed people in the parks. Everybody agreed, but now how was that gonna be funded? So there were three recommendations to commissioners in February of two, uh, 2018 that said, one is uh, through the general fund, that means the taxpayer, that means that, that allocation that was needed to pay the bill would be done through the taxpayer. Second would be through the recreation enterprise fund with a fee by the user. And the third would be the Recreation and Enterprise Fund, but understanding there would be a loss. So the commissioners that, if, uh, if, you, look, if you can look back on it on the uh, video, you'll see that the commissioners that day supported going with the Enterprise Fund and the user. And at that time it was established in 2018 at $5, because the cost then was much lower at about $50,000 or, or so, and we figured with the amount of children, students, participants, we could recoup that cost with the user. And so that's where we are then at different times, we had to raise that because of more participants, more time in the park, plus realizing that public safety had increased and more need. And so that's, that's how that came up with. So uh, present, the, presently the $7 uh, charge, 
uh, and that money goes to the enterprise fund. Correct. Uh, and uh, those uh, staff members are paid out of that fund. Correct. Is there is, is there a deficit still uh, with that seven dollar fee at this particular time? Yeah. Oh yes. Yes. How much of a deficit is it? Could you could you enlighten us a little well, bit? Something uh, close. I wish I had that. It, 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 Last year in FY22 uh, year in budget, it was it was I'm a, I'm, a, I'm gonna use the term forty thousand dollar deficit. So out of all the player fees that are being paid, there's and the staff that's going in there, there's still a forty thousand mm -hmm. dollar deficit. And <clears throat> with that in mind, uh, is is the is the income roughly from all the sports, uh, both you know winter, uh, spring, summer, year round. Is, is the amount of money somewhere close to eighty thousand dollars that we take in right now, give or take? Uh, it, uh, it depends on the year. The registrations commemorate pretty player, but it, it could be uh, maybe not even that high, Don. I wish I had that number here tonight, but that, I didn't see the fee. Wasn't trying to tie into. No, no, but I, I but I want to be accurate is what I'm just trying to say. So. Uh, 70, 80, somewhere in there, but okay. It's I know it's at a deficit. So, so, so we're losing losing almost 50 percent based on the present rate. That's correct. And your proposal is only to take it up 25 percent. Correct. So we're we're still going to be running a loss of another another uh, twenty thousand dollars, even by moving it to nine fifty. Correct. And thus I, think I think it's important for the for the public to understand that. Plus, the other reason, too, is that that's why, at that, now that you brought up that meeting, that's why I discussed that night about another a per field reservation fee. And thus, working with Little League, Babe Ruth, and all the other leagues I said that night, it would work with this summer. So about a recommendation possibly for FY25 okay. to come and, and, and that the revenue that would enough to support that. And the reason why what, ha what happened, too, is, is now... The seasons are longer, no doubt about it. Uh, generally, though, when we first start, when started, even with this plan, we we're almost done in November. We weren't starting again to March. They're playing turf fields and the other sports have, we play a year round. The more baseball teams, I mean, w what is Little League now? A thousand Babe Ruth? I don't uh, saw that printed. Uh, different numbers, so more uses of the field. We now know that public safety is much higher when you have multi sports and, um, and 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 people in the parks. We think we're still at a deficit in that. We don't even get to all the parks with that fee. Oh, wow. And then what's the delineation is the fact, let's say if you go over to Cecil Park, generally it's a baseball park, Little League's there. They, that's the user group that can probably handle what goes there. But now sometimes when you're at Dorsey Park, multiple users, people from around the region come in, there's a different need for more in the park. Right. So the, the, the $40,000, how is that made up? Where does that 40000 come from to make up? Okay, in the enterprise fund. <clears throat> so before you begin, can you specify which enterprise fund? Because I believe you said Recreation. It was a, thank you. We won't talk about golf anymore tonight. Absolutely, thank you. And, one, <laughs> and one, one of the reasons is that, too, the uh, golf course has their own advisory board as well, Greg, uh, Mr. Weaver's on that one. So that's, that's outside of our scope in, in most cases. Absolutely. So the recreation enterprise fund... <clears throat> In an enterprise fund, something almost like operates like a business. One of our biggest that provides a net, and we call a net revenue over expense, the net is in our summer camp and child care area. So when you have a loss, that's, those, are, those losses are covered by other particular programs. Then we have a retained earnings. What do we have? Going into COVID in 2020, 2020 our retained earnings was $600,000. Now it's down to, to zero because remember youth sports fees were waived that one spring there was no revenue there people coming inside we still opened the pool some other places but we didn't have gymnastics center uh, the virtual school age center but we weren't didn't have the revenue to match the expenses that were going out because again right over here at Lennon Hall you don't have the participation but the, the enterprise fund the utilities are paid there the staffing that goes there so we have an enterprise fund that's managed like a business about a uh, three million dollar enterprise fund 
probably uh, even larger, uh, but that's what uh, the actuals came out to be. So through the whole enterprise fund, those are made up through the all the programs put together, Don. Hope I, I made sense. So one of the questions that comes from uh, the uh, baseball and softball community is that uh, there's a lack of equity mm -hmm. in relationship to uh, the staff that shows up. And uh, so I'd like to bring a little bit of clarity to that for, for everybody. So, uh, for instance, T-Ball in, uh, in both programs in the county, the fields that they're using are uh, mainly school fields, correct? Sure. Uh, yet, yet they're charged the same player fees. And mm -hmm. the consensus is that they don't see the supervisors at those particular fields. My understanding is that they may not see them, but they do do what I'm going to refer to as sort of a drive-by uh, to see that maybe the people that are using them or the people that are permitted to use them and uh, there's no problem and that type of thing. Is, is that close to a description? Close, but I don't think that's the target. What, what happened? Let me, you all, let me allow me to explain. So this this enterprise called Park Support Youth Volunteer Affiliated Youth Sport Athletics, then you would say within that subset is just like the enterprise fund. So if we don't charge all, so we came up with a player fee instead of a reservation fee. The reservation fee is, should take care of all that, but a player fee said there were going to be approximately ten thousand athletes, $5 a piece, $50,000 pays the bill, it's spread out across. So some say that's not equity, but remember in the enterprise fund, some do more than others. Right. And that's just the, ha that's the, that's the, that's the work of an enterprise fund across the country, not just recreation and parks. That's, if you look that up. So then if you look at it like this though, if you look at it like this, whether it's a school field, let's start back when it was five dollars because it's easier to do the math five dollars 12 on the team that was sixty dollars to reserve that field mm -hmm. for the entire year right. Right. so uh, so you look at it as a reservation there and if we did put everybody everywhere then all what would have happened is what the fee would have been higher even at that time so it, it, one way or the other, it had to get paid. No, I, I, was, I wasn't bringing up from any suggestion that uh, it, it was an objection. Okay, no. on, only a point of understanding. And I wanted to be, yeah, that so, clarity. But, but the, other, the other thing would be is the reason why those particular functions may not need a person there the same time as uh, uh, other uh, campuses uh, could be simply that they're they're a lot more passive uh, in their activity than 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 other uh, than other parks. Single user, that's one. Okay. Uh, so and if, you, if you have if you have a, a two soccer fields going and the soccer league's there and that's all that they possibly don't need that. The other ones are areas that need more or where there's uh, walking. Uh, because walking traffic, adolescents in the whole, that, that creates a different environment. Um, and, the, and those would be the reasons uh, for that. Uh, a tiered approach could happen when we go to the reservation, uh, field reservation system. And we, but, but we'll wait on that until we meet with the group so that we'll have our first findings. They're probably May, June, so we can work it out. So by next September, I can be uh, assimilating that into the budget so then everybody will know what's going. The commissioners will be aware come next uh, December. So it would be fair. It would be fair to point out that also that uh, you're, you're looking at some type of uh, fee that may be more equitable in relationship to the maintenance of the the maintenance of the users of, uh, in particular, baseball and softball uh, is obviously a lot different than the than the field users uh, in uh, soccer and football and lacrosse and such. And so the the demand is a little bit different in season in relationship. To, to that, and last year, uh, the uh, <clears throat> the board and and uh, with the director went to the commissioners and explained that uh, we need to get off the field usage uh, where it's a requirement for them to to them to to prepare the fields before their games, and subsequently. Uh, I believe it was uh, $395,000 was uh, 
uh, put forth uh, for equipment and uh, $95,000 recurring for, for field maintenance. And uh, if so the annual maintenance cost 95 is a little bit less for, it was less than that for the equipment. And, we, and all the equipment, good news, all the equipment's here and we're ready to go. I beg your pardon? The equipment has arrived and we're ready to go. Right, okay. So uh, the, at, the, at the February 6th meeting, uh, uh, Mr. Copsey uh, used the word, uh, and I, I know that uh, uh, I feel he used the word on purpose. It's a reality word in, in, his, in his particular, I think you know where I'm gonna come with that word. Uh, he used the word, he hoped he had enough staff uh, to, uh, <clears throat> Uh, to, to move forward with that. And uh, obviously that's a challenge in this county because uh, in November, the uh, unemployment rate was uh, 3.1. That was a drop of six tenths of a percent from October and probably it's, it's much lower now, uh, lower than <clears throat> 2%. So, uh, or somewhere around 2.5 now. So uh, my, my question is, uh, how is he coming along uh, with uh, uh, the prospects of staff to take care of that? Well, I'm, I'm going to spare you there, Mr. Cobbsy, unless you... Because <laughs> he's looking at the wall. <laughs> Look, no. <laughs> he's, he's here to yell out a yeah, number. Yeah. You know, the, the, equipment, the equipment's arrived. We have uh, people that the training is scheduled. Um, it's looking good. Um, you know, you'll see how it rolls during the, during the year, but we'll be ready to start um, getting fields ready, uh, dragged on uh, Monday, March the 13th. Right. So there's no hope. No hope. We'll be there. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. Major. That's good to hear. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so I've, I've worked. I've worked out some figures. You know, based on where I'm wondering, and I'm sure the board is also wondering as well as the baseball and softball community in relationship to where you feel it's, it's going to go in the future in relationship to maintenance uh, at the level that uh, these uh, frustrated engineers to prepare this field uh, look for because that's their field of dreams. And uh, you know they want everything to be perfect and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and uh, the, the obvious is that as far as I'm concerned is whether or not whether or not that fee is really going to really going to cover that need, uh, I've always been interested in what kind of money would be necessary to come up with full-time maintenance people uh, instead of part-timers, and mainly because in 2021 there there was a presentation that 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 was made uh, that retention was a big part of the problem with uh, recreation and parks, uh, and. Uh, Obviously, uh, although we value our part-timers, we'd rather be able to offer full-time employment. Uh, <clears throat> Before you, some of the number. Sorry, go ahead. Some of some of the numbers that uh, that I had looked at and asked for, basically a, a full-time position. Uh, the full package comes to about fifty-five thousand dollars. Is that close? No, it'll be more than that. It'll be more than that. Okay. Could you throw a number out? Or would you rather not? No, I can throw one out now. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so you, you know, you're, th you're, th you're thinking now if you're going to move forward and you're going to keep somebody full time, your minimum is going to be about $50,000. Right. And then you're going to pay for the uh, hospitalization benefits, the pension plan and that. So you're going you're gonna to be up to seventy five to $80,000. Donna, I'd like to ask a question. When you say the fee, what fee are you are you are you speaking of? When you say would this fee cover it? No, what I'm, fee I'm, are you I'm still of? well. Curious? Okay, the, the the director had made had made uh, 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 looking forward that there was going to be a proposal of fees to. Uh, that were going to come aboard sooner or later, mm -hmm. that he was going to come up with a package uh, that was going to 
hopefully mirror uh, something along the lines of what it was going to cost to cover the expense of uh, <clears throat> preparing a field as oh, well okay. as possibly lights and, and so on for a game. And uh, uh, at I least that's it. what I'm liking to read into it. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly the avenue he's going to, but uh, that, that's, that's personally what I would, I would like to endorse. And I think that, I think that the, uh, <clears throat> I think that the baseball and softball programs would, would, would be happy with that also. But uh, I truthfully think to get there that, uh, and this has been a discussion, I, I don't uh, hide my, uh, uh, <clears throat> my own discussions and for full disclosure, I've been, been involved in the discussions that were brought forth this evening by uh, <clears throat> those representatives. And for full clarity, uh, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I present that, but uh, I think that they are, and not speaking for them, uh, you know, they're they're looking for that end to happen, okay? And if it means that, uh, uh, in order to accomplish that, that uh, a game fee, for instance, may go to not just preparation but lights. On a 60 to 20 dollars a game, or to 25 dollars a game for a 90, you know, they would like to see that kind of direction move forward. Oh. Uh, the other thing that was mentioned uh, by by the users is to to look at grass. And for full disclosure, uh, the director and I have had a conversation in regards to wells uh, in order to support grass uh, at a couple fields. Uh, and uh, I really think that with the long-term uh, outlook on <clears throat> uh, the proposed parks that are going to maybe house just a baseball complex or a soccer complex, that, that uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps we should be looking at what could be done <clears throat> in relationship to upgrading uh, fields into a, to a turf facility. Uh, it was brought up this evening, a 60 and 90 at uh, Dorsey, uh, and a 60 and 90 also at Bagot, which puts everything pretty much in a north or south, but yet close enough uh, that if tournaments are brought into the area that they would, they would take care of that function. And uh, uh, that's part of the, that's part of what they want to sit down and talk to you about. Uh, that being said, you know, probably I would, I would do a ballpark of probably three and a half million dollars, uh, give or take, uh, in order to accomplish that. And uh, uh, obvi the, the obvious is that uh, uh, other 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 savings and amortizing it over 20 years it would it could probably be looked at very favorably uh, but I, I still think that uh, we need full-time staff in Lancaster Dorsey uh, Baggett and Letty Dent and um, I still think that that should be the goal regardless of uh, I shouldn't say regardless, but I think that that should be the avenue based on uh, fees coming, going to the, uh, especially the baseball and softball. I realize that that may be a different mix in fees, but hmm. I, I think that I think that you're going to find that uh, these organizations uh, would like to see it go there. And I guess to end my remarks, I want to say this. Uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, the chair has, uh, and I think that the board is uh, in complete agreement that uh, it's time to have a separate section, and a separate time to sit down with the director, with these people, uh, and to uh, plan things out. Well, I'm not sure the board is in years. agreement with that. I'm, and sorry to cut you off, but. It should be known, well, I'm not sure, and, and the director can confirm this, but the league leader meetings are not, from what I understand, required. Oh, no, just a good idea. Understood. Good idea. So, uh, 
um, you, are you are you suggesting another meeting after uh, the two meetings I, that I, were? I'm, we, I'm asking. What, what for this board? You mean? No. I'm, are, are you suggesting I, to the I'm, director? I, I made a suggestion only that, uh, and I don't think the director. Obviously, I don't think the director is going to <coughs> disapprove of it. Uh, I, I, I've known him. I've known him since he was. Uh, <laughs> Well, let's not go there. <laughs> uh, Understood, and, and and I just wanted to. I, I just I'm, wanted I'm sure, to make I'm sure, sure I hear what her. I'm sure he's open to those conversations, to. regardless of of uh, who who would be asking for them. Correct, correct. So I, I just wanted to clarify because you said I'm sure the board was in agreement. So I just wanted to clarify that your suggestion to the director is to have another meeting with the league leaders. On I spoke for myself and not the entire board okay. for clarity. Appreciate that. Great. So, so I just, to wrap this discussion up, um, Director, I just wanted to understand, or if you could clarify, if the maintenance fees are part of the usage fees, park support, or are they two separate items? Well, well currently we only have the one fee, mm -hmm. and that's the $7 participation fee. That's what we just called it coming out of the block. Right. And that goes to the hourly staff that supervise and have oversight in the parks. Because now, with the $95,000 recurring fee and the equipment, the maintenance fee is provided by the taxpayer. Understood. And and just for clarification for the board, because there sometimes I believe there is a mis misconception. Mm -hmm. Sure. Why, why is this player fee or this park support fee increasing? From $7 to, I believe it's $9 now. Well, once again, we're operating at a deficit right now. Okay. And we want to recoup some of that back. And that's when I realized also, too, there's a couple reasons. When you have a per field fee, what you're looking at is another strategy there is when you have a participation fee, and now this room, this building's open every day because there's no additional cost. And if you come or you don't come, you book it anyway. Mm -hmm. By having a field reservation fee, Covered. that controls requests, use, and brings the equity that we're talking about. Absolutely, I agree with that. I, I just want to try and simplify a few things just for our audience more than anything else. <clears throat> so I was at the meeting on, on the 6th, um, and I just do want to be clear that, so that was the league leaders meeting, but it was specifically baseball and softball, and then the other sports were the following week. Thank you. Um, and so one of the questions that I did ask that I just want to make known was that the question was, is this just for baseball and softball? And it's not. This this is encompasses Correct. all of it. So, you know, right now we're, it's a $7 player fee. The plan or the proposal is, and again, this is not, and you can correct me where I'm wrong if, if, I'm, if I'm wrong at this point, Mr. Shepard, is a transition to that increases to nine fifty dollars as of July 1. Again, that's not approved yet, but that's correct. the proposal. Correct. And then for future year that you trans, you maybe keep or even eliminate, I guess that's all part of what could happen even further in the future is maybe that fee goes away, mm -hmm. maybe Maybe the specific light fee goes away and there's just a field usage fee at some combination of those things which is yet to be determined correct right so and I think that in essence what the purpose of like tonight and the, those league leader f f um, meetings is to present the items that the leagues would want because ultimately the leagues don't care how it gets to be I would assume it's what they're looking for as the result and then that'll be part of the process and it goes back to what Mr. Shepard was saying back when he came in 2018. There's going to be three ways that that's going to happen. Taxes are going to be raised to pay for the extra expenses, whether that's people in the parks. There's going to be loss in the enterprise fund or there's going to be the fees that pay for it. And so that very good, Mr. Longobard. Absolutely. Just to try and simplify that for everyone's um, thoughts. Yeah. So thank you. Um, but I think the important thing for the leagues is they share what they want. And then Mr. Shepard figures out how that all. Right. The commissioners say yes. Yeah. So that's, I think, that's I think, really important. So. I, th I think to, for, for myself, and, and uh, I, I attended Tuesday's uh, session with, uh, uh, that the commissioners had, and uh, uh, a, a couple things came up there that I, I felt it was important to bring all this up to, to get it away from uh, what can be perceived as uh, a lot of just total discontent 
in relationship to requests that are being made and to bring it into a conversational context, which uh, uh, I, I feel is going to move forward. But uh, one, of, one of the bigger things that I think also in relationship to commissioners' uh, uh, <coughs> thought process is uh, <coughs> some, some of the remarks that came out uh, in relationship to some of the conversation that was going on, and that is uh, uh, some of the newer, uh, well, I don't want to use names, I guess, at, at all, but the, a couple of commissioners made, made some remarks with, uh, I guess their understanding was that this uh, 950 fee was going towards maintenance of the facilities and and this type of thing and and uh, uh, and that's a learning curve but but really to end my conversation for sure I'd like to I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, Mr. Alderson's uh, remarks which uh, I really 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 enjoyed uh, and I didn't mind using his name because it's there for everybody to review and that is. Uh, we do not make $150 million a year, and you don't have to be bald to be on a county, to be a county commissioner. Okay. And uh, I, I felt that uh, those two things summed it up with a little bit of humor at the end, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm not going to apologize for using okay. his remarks, <laughs> even though really gotta get it going. I'm not bald. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, so we definitely, uh, this has been a very would. helpful uh, conversation. I hope we've I hope we've cleared up a few things, um, you know, misconceptions and, and presented some facts, so I appreciate you. And we'd like to move along. Um, um, you might as well stay. Glad that you're here. Um, we just, I just have some questions. I don't know if the, com if the board members have any existing questions, but I just have some questions regarding the basketball programming. Um, I know there was discussion at last month's meeting <laughs> regarding facility usage, right, specifically the Carver Recreation Center. So I'd just like to understand what it would take for that facility to be made available more often for any, I don't know how to say, on the fly basketball or a more basketball programming throughout the week and um, off season. So I'd just like to understand what, that was my first question, what it would take. Let me lead, would you let me lead? Oh, sure, and then sure. I'm gonna turn it to Jessica. So the Carver Recreation Center, is a, I, I like to see it program more, there's no doubt about it. And, and, and it, but as you know, uh, the challenge is, we pay every the staff and the utilities there as well, so that there's an expense coming along with that. So then we have a, a fee program, and what the challenge is is, yeah, you want to get all that money through your fee, but if nobody's using it, you haven't right. done anything either. Right. So that's where we are. So, okay. uh, Miss uh, Chair. Uh, Working with you too, uh, or anybody regarding that to to bring the community about how what kind of user wants to use it because we have it's a nice facility now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what that what that means, but that's the challenge is is to have fees that will get you to break even. But if it's not being used, you're not getting the revenue. So we understand that. Now I'd like to turn it to Jessica to say what are the current types of uses there now. Um, so currently for Carver Recreation Center, obviously during, well, maybe not obviously, but during basketball season, um, it is utilized four nights out of the five. Excuse me, could you move a little closer to your mic, please, Jessica? Thank you very much. Four nights out of the five <clears throat> for basketball practice. Mm -hmm. um, and then we might have during the season, but also throughout the year, we have a lot of other leisure type of programs that are held there. Sometimes we've had karate. Mm. Um, we've had different types of other um, s softball um, pitching clinic is another big one that is is there. Um, and in the summertime, it's heavily used, Monday through Friday at summer camp. So you're talking, you know, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mm. It's utilized for our summer camp programming. Okay. Um, and then in between those two seasons, which isn't a whole lot of time in between those seasons, right. we leave it open for rentals. So, I mean, there's all sorts of possibilities. Um, again, as Arthur alluded to, um, it just it, – the programs if they don't have enough participation. Um, but staff has also been trying to be creative to offer different opportunities as well. Um, we had a, a group actually over the last couple of months that reserved it um, one of the days that it was available to actually play basketball. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a, a, an adult group got that it. got together, rented it, paid the rental fee, and mm -hmm. then utilized it for that. Yeah. A lot of our programs are dependent upon being able to find people who can run it or can teach the program. Oh. So you know, there's a lot that goes hand in hand. If I had people 
wind up dying to instruct something or to hold a particular event that that <laughs> usually is is what I'm holds honored. us back sometimes but our goal is to program as much as possible right, in right. our facilities yeah. as much as we can so, so what, what are there some particular programs that people are looking for because that that would excite me well uh, uh, mr De mr mr shepherd you you i'm sure you're aware there's always conversation of well why can't we use the gym and my response is always well why don't you call and reserve it yeah okay well that's yeah the and, and and then also too the, the other one would be is is what is that threshold because again if you have a building that's sitting there yeah. and you're not coming in and you're waiting for forty dollars it's better to for the community to have it for 30 because your 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 threshold your delta is 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 going to improve a, a little bit just by somebody using it right. and i want but i also want to uh, look for carver to be a place to be a scholarship house too mm -hmm. for the neighborhood mm -hmm. so that if we had one user in there that would be good then the other user could come use the uh, right positive youth development section right. at no charge. Right. So that would be kind of a form of a scholarship, although we have a scholarship fund through the golf tournament. But right. I want that to use be more than, use more than what it is. Right. So also I know uh, uh, some of the board members were expressing some type of opportunity in the northern county, the northern part of the county. Um, is there any opportunity for some type of facility other than Margaret Brent um, anywhere else that the department is looking at? No, but not purposefully, no. Right. But when you, you figure one of these facilities that we just came around the gymnastics center, I, I received a phone call uh, of that. If there's something in there that, that has a utility to be revamped mm -hmm. and then we can recoup the money to pay the bills on that, that, that we're open to that very much so. Perfect. Yeah, Ma Margaret Brent's small. Yeah. Margaret yeah. Brent's small. Good. All right. So... Any questions before I pivot? Yes, I have. I have one uh, on uh, not to disappoint anyone. <laughs> uh, so uh, at the last meeting, uh, Mr. McDonald uh, brought up uh, a uh, a question mm -hmm. regarding uh, inventory we have and and lowering uh, the basketball hoops down to eight feet for the for for the uh, younger members and uh, his thought process was that uh, that's one of the reasons. Why why uh, the numbers are down in the younger age groups. I'm not in a position to disagree with those numbers or not. Right. Just get frustrated, you know, or, or whatever. And uh, if you're not going to make the be able to make the basket, why am I out here Stop doing playing. this? So, right. uh, did, did you did the staff uh, have chance to do any inventory? And and I guess the last part of my question would be, is if not, what would be the possibility of looking at uh, what <clears throat> What, what, uh, any kind of retrofitting or whatever that would allow that to be done, especially at, at Carver and Margaret Brent. Okay, uh, very interested in that. No, that yeah, you, you don't like to say you didn't have a chance, but we're knee deep right now in our playoff season. Derek's here, and uh, that's nightly and weekends and and all that. So, Christy, can you put that handbook back up? Yeah, we were going to pivot to that. No. Yes. Getting there. Yes. So the youth basketball handbook. So what happened? Here's here's the uh, uh, trove of information for youth basketball. So what will happen here in the next? Probably take the the month off of basketball, come back fresh, and that's when we to start Jessica, Derek, and begin the planning on the new improvements okay. for youth basketball. So this is ready to go in September. So when people begin to register, they know what's available. And that piece that Dave McDonough, the board member, spoke about, that will be addressed and looked into to be a part of this. So, well, I guess specifically what I was uh, what I was looking at is, you know, should should that <coughs> Should, is there a possibility, if it's feasible and affordable, for those two facilities that, that uh, Rex and Parks has control over to be able to, well, uh, yeah, to, lower, to lower those? And then obviously scheduling of those age groups might, you know, one's sort of north and one's sort of really? south. It would be a little easier to try to solve that problem with uh, those younger users. Sure, and there's even some school gyms that currently have it. So we'll look in, but that's what I meant. We'll look into all that, check our inventory what we can do, get it displaced. I believe King's Christian Academy has rooms that go, and where they are, we will travel. 
Oh, that's so, good. Yeah, so but we're going to look into to all of that and see if that makes a difference. That's good. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you for bringing up the handbook because I, I I wanted to I, I wanted to <laughs> to poke Jessica a little bit to see if there was any consideration regarding um, um, what some of the members had um, pretty much suggested a separation of the female the younger ladies and the younger boys at the third and fourth grade and I know it's based on um, registration numbers I understand that so I'm just wondering if there's any if there's any thought to including that if it's possible. So what we do postseason, as Arthur was referencing, is we take into account any of the feedback, anything that we learned throughout the season. Mm -hmm. um, we have a pretty thorough evaluation meeting, um, and we also survey every single parent. Oh, so good. that survey is already out. It's also posted on our website. Mm -hmm. It's been emailed directly to all participants that were registered for the programs. Um, we have just over 100 um, that have responded to the youth basketball, um, maybe almost that for select basketball. I haven't looked in a few days, but that's going to be recirculated again. Okay. And we always um, utilize that as kind of our, you know, to look for the trends of what people are saying, okay. um, what worked, what didn't work, where we we need to address it and then we put together a report for all of those things and then anytime we update something in the handbook we highlight that in red so that moving forward you know what rules changed or what um, yeah. additions have been made to the to the process. So that, was that on survey bunky right? Yes. I believe I, I'll say yeah. You yep. got any questions? I know you got some questions. You got some questions? Most of your uh, for your third and fourth grade league the elementary schools those baskets automatically come down to different heights, am I right? Yeah, that, that's what, so we need to check that. Don't have a site, you you bring baskets in. Yes, we have portables. Yeah, you bring them in. That we've used before. When we were at Banneker in years past, we had the portables there. That's um, good. With basketball, do you have a sportsmanship meeting with coaches before the season? There is a coaches meeting before the season, yes. And is that addressed sports with all the coaches? Yes. Okay. And, and the week before the season starts, everybody is a great sport. <laughs> before it starts, that's, that's right. Because I actually yeah. was a basketball parent this year, so before the sport. But yeah, understood. Understood. Any more questions? No. I wish Thank they you, Mr. Well, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. I, and I do know that there are three of us on the board that we would like to um, provide you with our suggestions. <laughs> so Bill we'll Lapper. be we'll be presenting that to you. So yep, that sounds mm -hmm. good. Yep. And then That's anybody good. else that you know that if they haven't filled it out, just take the time to fill it because we do. You know, it's not like we just post it for the heck of posting it. Um, we actually read every single right. submission and we tabulate all the data and we gather it and we analyze it and apply it to what we're going to do for the next year. Right. And we'll bring that uh, evaluation, that report, the findings. We'll bring Perfect. it right here. We would love to. We would mm -hmm. love to read that. Right. All right. Moving right along. Um, oh, so for, for the chair, I would like I would like the chair to consider that this baseball uh, basketball conversation continue to be on the next agenda. Uh, absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. Um, moving right along, I just have a quick question regarding the uh, RP Project 1904. I know that there was some movement from the commissioners to my joy. <laughs> can, you can you provide the, the board with what's going to happen next? And that's the uh, sports complex yes, project? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I've been. Christy actually has done an excellent job uh, with me and, and even independently. But so we were in just this past week, or was it last week, with the Maryland State and my authority regarding funding for preliminary design. Hey. And so we had uh, $202,000 approved in that project. The first 52000 were the economic and market uh, study, and that was about a uh, multi-sport field type of complex. But as you know, we have keep talking about turf fields are here, uh, for, for the rectangular turf fields are here. So now what a preliminary design is a site fit, uh, environmental, geotech, geological, you know, the surface to ground studies, stormwater management, and what constraints are there and what committed funding. So we can use, we can use that $150,000 we got in that bond grant authority and right. use that and we're pursuing that now. Okay. And it'll, it'll take a while to get that because I know what it took me to work with Crossroads, the consultant with Maryland and Stadium Authority to get the, uh, the market and economic study. But that's moving forward. Yay. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving right along. I, I know that the facility park improvements will, will 
initiate a healthy discussion. Um, so I'd like to skip that, and if you could just provide us with some SMECO updates before we um, enter into a discussion about the facility and park improvements. Mr. Shepard. So we, I, would, I would like to interject something if the chair doesn't mind. Okay. Uh, in relationship to the sports complex. Oh, uh, okay, sorry. I didn't ask the uh, questions. The, I'm sorry, board. The number, the, the, I'd like to know, uh, is there any projection on what the county funding is, is the county is gonna have to come up with for that, for that sports complex, regardless of what's in it? Man, Don, you may ask me a hard one there, because uh, that's what this whole thing about a preliminary design is about. Right. Uh, to see to, to see what fits, but it's it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be in the teens of millions of dollars, mm -hmm. if not more. Mm -hmm. That 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 cost that's in there currently right now is not gonna do it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Just, but it gives you an idea, I guess. But it's start. not gonna do it. Oh, We've all right agreed now, to that. And seven two. So seven yeah, two is. What yeah. So so think about so think about this. You, there, the six turf fields were seven mil. Right. And those were overlaid on current no infrastructure you had to purchase. Here you're you, you at didn't You didn't have you didn't have to put a road, you didn't do anything. A bathroom, driveway, uh, community building for tournaments, uh, concession stands, playground, nothing. Right. So yeah, that's not gonna do it. That's just what's yeah, uh, posed. Now is that designed based on a specific location yet? Or the location, yeah, we have to serve up a location. It's going to be the Crossroads property right there across the street from um, St. Andrews Estates on Route 4 at St. Andrews Church Road. The hell? Okay. There's property there. Okay. Because then last time we were talking about potentially the land that's right off of Indian Bridge Road. Is that not? <laughs> that no, that, that would be too small for that. No, okay. We're, okay. no it's going to be most most likely, and, now that's, and I say that honestly, most likely. And the reason there is because that's where what? Hotels and restaurants are, which the day comes that you want to have those tournaments, you're prepared. The amenities that are going in that park, uh, have they been absolutely finalized or are they still mm -hmm. open for discussion? Sign. Discussion. Thank you. Uh, one, one, uh, uh, would point out that my earlier discussion in relationship to that three and a half million dollars uh, for the uh, fields that I already stated uh, might, might uh, <clears throat> wind up being even having more consideration because they could already go into uh, uh, without without ex without uh, acquiring or interfering with uh, uh, land purchasing, so on and so forth. That uh, uh, if these other parks were able to be updated to, mm. in relationship to consider uh, uh, turf fields in the, mm -hmm. in those two areas. Well, that is going to be a challenge going forward. Is is to get get a complex, you know, that kind of money involved in capital projects plus the renovations that we're talking about too. So that's but that's just part of the discussion. That's that's a discussion every community has, not every, but should have or going to have. Moving forward, evolving. All right. Uh, any any other questions regarding the sports complex? We we look forward to. I know this is going to be a long process because yeah. look how long it's taken us to that's get it going. So appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we can, uh, I'd like to pivot to, again, the SMECO updates, if you could just provide us, it. yeah, if you could just provide us where we are right now. Okay. Empower, I think it's Empower America. Mm. Mm. Okay, Empower Maryland, that's, uh, Maryland. Every, every, Empower right. Maryland's on everybody's, uh, you can look at it, I think it's on the back of your electric bill. That's a part of your bill across the state of Maryland that goes to this fund. They did just reaward Energy Select as their small business owner that puts the, uh, uh, can retrofit the lights or do other things with lights, inside facilities, parking lots and so forth to convert to LED for cost savings and energy savings. Well. We have in the FY24 budget right now $450,000 for the retrofitting of lights to LED lights. Eight of the 13 fields are baseball, softball. 
where it's coming down since it's FY24 anyway, but I was hoping to get it quicker. Where it's coming down now is the bidding process for that because there's one group that can give you the rebates from 60 to 70 percent. What that again would mean if you had $500,000 worth of lights, a 60 percent uh, a rebate would be 300,000. For 500,000, you're only paying 200. That's that's a great deal through that Empower Maryland as they're wanting to reduce the energy consumption, which in turn reduce savings, uh, create savings. I've heard the question uh, about well, will, will the direct the savings go directly to the leagues. I couldn't make that promise to say yes uh, because once again, there's an enterprise fund that we're talking about. That's just that's a form of revenue. But you know, that's 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 the discussion we'll have. We just did did get some um, switches put on two of the fields that Chancers run, so we'll be able to tell in a couple months if putting lights on switches will cut down the demand cost that will then lower the electric bill. So that's another one we're doing. So really it's in the hands of uh, getting some bids and finalizing uh, how we're going to bid this out as far as getting these retrofits done, which will be both energy savings and cost savings. But we're, we're almost hitting third base. Awesome. We tripped it short stop, but we're almost there. <laughs> I would I would state to my my fellow members that uh, uh, obviously the initiative uh, in relationship to this entire light building thing uh, when it, when it came before the board and uh, its actions and where it's at now, uh, I think I think the board should should have a good feeling that you know now now we now we now have a test being done. On that energy and distribution demand, uh, it's uh, it's like watching paint dry sometimes, uh, and for everybody, and I'm sure the directors included with that. But uh, uh, I, I really, really, uh, really, I'm glad to see that it's uh, you know getting into into third base, as the director just put it. That's good. But I do I do have a question still uh, about that four hundred fifty thousand dollars for lights. Mm. Uh, and uh, when, when I asked the question uh, the last meeting, uh, I, I, I thought the, the figure the figure that I was under the impression of, unless unless I'm not correct, was it was I think you had said that the retrofitting looked like it was going to run around 186,000. Now uh, has that. Is this 450? Is that above and beyond what that retrofitting was is going to cost, or why did that jump so much? All right, at that time, um, it wasn't clear if it were going to be able to go through the small business solutions. Mm -hmm. So without that, I said, whoa, the best it's going to be is 186. We better go high. Because remember, from one company that was going to retrofit the four fields at Chancers was a million dollars. Right. Remember that? So, whoa, then I felt pretty, we were pretty shy even at 450. That's what we had to live with. So I tried to get in there somewhere so at least we could get a start and get some fields done. But it looks like if we get back up if from shortstop and hit tag third, we're, we're getting ready to get, get home pretty good. So that 186, I'm not going to say that's the final number, but it'll certainly get, be within that 450 if we can if we can keep it with the small business solutions program. So what's the final number you think it's going to look at? Do you think it's going to run 450 or lot? Or no, it'll be less than 450 if we say with small business solutions. Mm -hmm. But you were being safe with that number. Sounds good. Pretty much. That okay. sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for that update. Um, I'd like to pivot to the. Facility park and park, park and facility and park improvements. Um, we understand there has been, and please confirm, there has been um, some some budget submissions for this particular RP project. Is that correct for FY twenty four? Yes. Okay. Um, does that include, well, obviously that doesn't include what's ongoing right now. So if you could uh, just give us, and I know you stated before that you are ready to roll. So um, can you just give us an idea of what that looks like and what we can the park expect? Improvement, the park yep. improvement account? Yes, sir. Yes, I can. Arthur, I don't believe we have the proposed 24 because there wasn't any direction given to mm -hmm. us on what to prepare. So I don't think I have any of those numbers here. That's that's 
five, I believe. Um, yeah, what we have. And for the chair, one, a, a question I had also in relationship to park improvement is: is there uh, anything uh, looking forward to uh, what what could be done to? Uh, uh, get more parking space at Bagot uh, because when those fields are getting used with uh, with a trail and, and bikers and everything else, I mean you you, you really can't find a, a parking space there. Well, he uh, did, he didn't he didn't address what I what I proposed first. So I just wanted to understand what you're proposing in our in the budget work sessions for this particular project so for park facilities and for improvements first. And I don't have there, Madam Chair, but here here we go. I, so let's just let's, an idea. There's one point six million in there. Mm -hmm. We know that, and then you see the budget. Don't get confused when you see the two point six, because the two point six is just because. Remember the last two years and why we had the infield improvement project. The governor Hogan allocated a million or million point two two years in a row. Right. So we just kept that as a funding tool. Uh, the the uh, finance director did. So the one point six. Well, you know now lights is four fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, skate park at Chapter Co. Park, 450. That's 900,000 right there at the 1.6. I know we have a, do we have a playground in uh, 24? Cardinal Gibbons. Yeah. And that's what, 300? 250. 250, so that's one point, you know, so you're, you're, you're up to almost 1,200 out of that 16. Then ADA improvements, uh, see if I can hit it on one more. I apologize, but. Oh, you'll have some in there. Oh, you do have some in there for the golf course, Mr. Weaver. That's correct. I see you looking at me. Uh, all good. Uh, but I can't think of those third for ADA transition plan. Asphalt overlay? Oh, yeah, asphalt overlay. Yeah, yeah. And trail. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. So, so okay. So this, this this list that you included in our agenda is pretty much what we're looking at. No. No, because what you have there is 22 and 23. I give you the right. current year and the previous year. So some of those items may be similar, but okay. without having that s spreadsheet. Okay. I'm saying we'll come up with Shores, Chapter Coast Skate Park, Athletic Field, and Asphalt Overlay. So you know, there's oh, and it just says playground. So I just wanted to wanted to just ensure that these are pretty much it for what we're work looking at. That's correct. Okay, all right. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Don. <laughs> What's your question about Bagger Park? <laughs> Oh, parking at Bagot Park. Yeah, we we we, we totally recognize that. We've all we've all been around Bagot Park looking at. Probably tried to get away a couple of years ago, thinking that, that some of that in interior there be auxiliary park and not used all the time. But when you need, but certainly there's a user group there, so we need to get back with them about that uh, and maybe move somewhere so that we can use that because we recognize that it's crowded there and we're delighted that it's crowded there. But it, I think it, it does need some form of relief. Well, there. the only the only thing is, is the obvious when those turf fields go in there, you're going to get more, need more parking. So, the good thing about turf fields, you can put cars on there and um, <laughs> <laughs> hit around them, hit around them. <laughs> I know you also had some questions about Dorsey, I believe it was, Dorsey Park. Uh, Dorsey has, Dor Dorsey's parking is, has similar problems, but mainly because people just park all over the place because there's not two lines to park into. But uh, the, the, So know, here's a new strategy, and, and, and this is what's going to have to get sophisticated too now that with our growth. One of the things is that it, a lot of lot don't want to participate on Friday, leave an open space all day Saturdays, and so you have this influx all at the same time. Mm. So that's one, and then what that does that puts a demand on parking, and that we have to, we cannot do like we did in the past. And so a league, you saw an empty field, why can't I play? Well, because it doesn't have the capacity to park all the people at the same time. Oh. For practice, it does, but when you double that up and bring another team in there, it doesn't. So the that's another form of uh, of um, public safety because you, you, RJ will be meeting with uh, Kyle in our on our staff and the uh, sheriff staff tomorrow about public safety right. regarding opening day at Chancellor's. We're ahead of it and see how we can do that. So parking's a big issue. Well, that was one of the reasons I began thought about the uh, uh, park support staff in the first place because I was over at Dorsey Park when I first came back. It was too crowded, couldn't get on the road. People were parking everywhere, and then I realized we had more people in here in the park than we could handle. Oh, okay. And then thus flag football went up to 5th District Park. 
just just couldn't hold that many. So that's another route, and we'll talk about this the, more this summer too when we sit down with the with the leagues about a potential fee and also about how we uh, have to. Uh, Address. Look at how many. How, what's our capacity? We can get in there. Uh, uh, all of our parks. How many games can be played at a time? And therefore, uh, where we can go to do that and keep it safe. That'll be That's interesting that discussion. you know you mentioned the public safety. So is the public safety fee included? And and where does that that fund, where does that public fee safety go? is a subset of park support. Okay. We okay, call that I know part of Lake public safety. Yes. Okay. Because if, if you can just imagine, you say, well, they don't do anything. But if you can imagine, if they weren't there where that parking would be, uh, if we didn't, full-time staff didn't know, if there weren't pictures taken, if uh, if we weren't smoke-free zones, if uh, you know, all the different things that life throws at us. Right. And park uh, we support. knew it was okay. time uh, we had to have. Okay. So I'm, I'm curious, is the, the park, the public safety fee, is that, does that feed into the, the recreation activity fund and Yes. Do we, we, excuse me, the department pays out to the public safety apparatus? Right. Well, we're, we're really, we're right now I have two funds. One is you pay that participant fee. Right. Park support, public safety for the staff, hourly staff in there. Right. The commissioners also allocated themselves That's what I to, the to get at. the tax fund for the deputies that are in the parks. And we're asking for more this year. We're asking more for uh, hourly staff on the tax side for a place like Nicolette Park that doesn't have revenue producing at the time uh, so that we can have oversight there. But yeah, we the, the deputies that are in the parks that's 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 what I wanted to point out because I know during the football season at Lancaster, hmm. right. So I just wanted to point out where that fee came from, and it was actually the commissioners who mm -hmm. provided that. So that, that's you. tax support funds for the deputies to be in. Well, uh, a lot of the parks at different times we had them. Or commissioners, we need more money for that. So Youth yeah. basketball all-star games that we just had uh, down at now. Uh, so here's another one. Do you take the um, the uh, deputies that are at Myrtle Point Park on the weekend? Mm. Oh, yes. Alcohol oh. loves to come in via the boat. Oh, wow. So the deputies there, though, are paid out of the enterprise fund, that user fee that pays to enter the park, the beach. Oh, okay, park. okay. Then that's used to pay those deputies. Well, what kind that's of all I have tonight. More money for the <laughs> public safety. What kind of fine is involved with that? I mean, Citations, but generally, but generally there isn't there isn't any because they're on site. Sometimes uh, we have to call them; and they come out. Uh, then they handle that citation or, or that warning. Mm. Wow. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions regarding the park? Excuse me, facility and park improvements. No. None here. None here. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Director. I appreciate you. I was hoping to see Sunny the Squirrel. Darn. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, um, board members, um, I believe we've addressed everything. Um, we have 45 seconds for board member remarks. 45 seconds. So you better get other people to pass before you come to me then. I, I don't think anyone else has anything to say. You, uh, oh, you I do? do? Okay. Yes. I do. You do? Okay. 45 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I'll go ahead. Okay. A lot of questions about uh, what did you get for your $14,000? Um, you got safe parks, you got an attendant there, okay? Some of the other things you get that you don't really look at for your 14,000, you get your grass cut, you get your dugouts, you get your fencing, you get all that. I know that's part of a different funding, but that's still, someone has to pay for it. You get your bathrooms, you get your walkways, you get your lights on your walkways. They've improved a lot of the lighting, they've done a lot of different things for the leagues. So that's the one thing. And the big thing you get was, like we had, we had the seven people at the meetings asking for your input, asking for their baseball team, and not only anybody that uses the fields. The second meeting was the same way, okay? And they were, they were brought up, they let, they let them know about the increase in the fee, okay? Uh, and you got what you asked for. I mean, you guys asked for fields to be prepared, okay? They're getting six new people at $96,000. Okay, new equipment, 150 to 300,000. We've heard th two numbers tonight. Okay, the review of the lights, okay? The director's working that right now, trying to get better lighting, better for your, so we can lower the fees on the lighting, okay? But that new field preparation of that is $2.50, okay? I know you weren't happy with the rework on the fields. I understand that, but that again, 
Mr. Copsey and his team are working on it, okay? So the Parks and Recreation team is doing a really good job on working to get you what you need and listening to what you need. They don't need to be blasted all over the county and all different papers and everywhere else. They're doing a great job. Just remember that when you write those letters. Thank you. Well, Ms. Veronica, so. uh, I just want to remind everybody, I know we've We've spoken about a lot about sports tonight, but there is a whole nother part of recreation and parks. So I think the summer camps opened, um, registration on opened Monday. on yesterday. Yeah, the first, sorry. Yeah, yes, the yesterday. First. And so um, don't forget to sign your kids up for all the great programs that are out there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll um, end the last message with thank you for that. I, I find it a little upsetting that Mr. Bean didn't stay for that comment. Um, um, we, we, excuse me, the board accommodated um, he presenting public remarks, but he didn't stay for the board remark, board member remarks. So I'm a little upset over that, but it's okay. <laughs> I understand. So um, with that being said, 10 seconds. I would uh, just like to point out to everybody in general, total public, that our recreation and parks, put a smile on your face, go visit them, have fun, get rid of some of that tension, and uh, that's what they're there for, enjoy them. And as far as all the sports go, it's only a game, let them play it. Thank you very much. All right, with that being said, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All right, we are adjourned. Have a good evening.